You're watching Steve TV. <laughs> pick these other guys up and then I'll uh Guys, my name's Mark, and I'll be taking you up to the old rainforest today. So we'll go through the plan now. Just keep cruising up the road to Mossman. A couple of interesting things here, actually, guys. These trees here are pretty amazing. They're called rain, uh, not rain trees. They're called paper barks. These big fellas here, obviously, because of the papery bark. But uh, you don't usually see them that big. You know, these, these ones are quite a few hundred years old along Palm Cove here. So they've sort of nicely designed all the resorts around them, which is nice. And uh, the other thing of interest here is a stinger net, which is over here on the right hand side. So that's to protect you from being stunned by a box jellyfish, which I'll explain a bit more about later. But uh, yeah, if you're going to swim off the beach, you've got to swim in that net um, from about November through till May. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do, guys, is just going to keep cruising up the Mossman. As I said, we're just about to hit this coastal section now, so we're just going to get really, really nice views for the next half an hour. And uh, when we get to Mossman, there's a chance to have a stretch of the old legs there and use the toilets. And a uh, chance to grab something to eat too, if you want to grab something to eat, a nice little cafe there. Do all sorts of breakfast stuff. So uh, we'll hang out there for 10 minutes or so. Then we're gonna take you up to the Daintree River. Put you on a boat, so you're gonna do an hour long cruise up the Daintree, spotting things like crocodiles, and snakes, and birds, and frogs. And if you don't see any of those things, you're going to see lots of trees and water. Uh, totally natural. They're not allowed to feed the crocodiles, so it just depends on Mother Nature, of course. But uh, worst case scenario, if we get about 45 minutes into it, we haven't seen any crocodiles. Uh, we might get one of you guys to volunteer just to swim around the boat a couple of times. It usually does the trick, yeah. It's a little bit dangerous. I have to work out who's a good swimmer. But um, yeah, fingers crossed we don't have to worry about that, so uh, hopefully we'll see some. <laughs> beautiful river, so it's good for photos. Do the cruise. Uh, we're going to meet you on the other side. We'll take you up into the forest then. We'll visit a lookout. Really good photo opportunity there too. Look straight over the mouth of the river back down the coast. We were travelling up this morning. We're lucky we might be able to see all the way back down here actually. We'll see how we go with the, with the weather. Uh, so yeah, photo opportunity there. Then we're going to go for a walk. 
the walk we're going to do today, guys, put Jim Dalba boardwalk. Excellent example of the rainforest up there. Easy walk, 35, 40 minutes. It's on a boardwalk, so no stress. You don't have to worry about tripping over all the time, which is nice. And uh, hopefully we might see a bit of wildlife in there as well. So do that. Then we're going to head down to lunch. Lunch today is a barbecue. Now, is anyone a vegetarian? No one. No, that's good. I've got lots of meat thawing around the back, so it would have been awkward if you'd have all been vegetarians. Um, yeah, so the lunch is actually really, really nice. It's, uh, it's yeah, steaks and sausages and the uh, salads that they make for us up there are excellent. So even the guys, we've been in the same lunch now for about six or seven years, and we still look forward to it every day, so this is it all really. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll enjoy lunch. Um, also the place we have lunch, guys, it's got, we've got lots of animals there, so we can uh, go and check all those fellas out while we're there. They've got some kangaroos, they're always happy to see us. We've got some snakes, we're a snake fan, they've got birds. They've even got a couple of baby crocodiles actually, so you can wander around and check those fellas out while we have lunch. Then uh, after lunch this afternoon we're going to head up further north and uh, going to visit a creek, a little creek called Emogen Creek. And there's a chance up there to have a swim. Really nice swimming hole. We're coming out of the wet season now, the swimming hole. I reckon we had a big flood up there about two weeks ago. I reckon it gouged another foot out of the swimming hole. So it's nice and deep, it's looking really nice at the moment. So, chance to have a swim while we're there. We're going to cut open some fruit, do a bit of fruit tasting as well. So, the uh, that's always interesting because the fruit we get up here in the tropics it doesn't really travel that well. Um, a lot of it's really soft. So, hopefully, there's a couple of weird ones that you guys have never seen before. So, we'll do that while we're up there. We're also going to have a cup of tea. A cup of Billy tea, that's what Billy tea is. It's actually a type of tea made in a thing called a Billy, so we'll do that for you while we're up there as well. Hang out there, then we're going to head down to the beach, Cape Trip Beach. Beautiful beach, but uh, you can't swim at the beach, guys, because of those jellyfish. Um, these jellyfish, as I said, we get them from about November through till May. They breed up in the river systems around the coastline, and they get washed out when it floods into the ocean. Once they hit the ocean, they start to uh, get bigger and bigger. They get to about the size of your hand, but it's the tentacles that you've got to look out for because they get up to three metres long and they contain neurotoxins and if they brush up against your skin they'll inject those neurotoxins into you and uh, we're talking worst case scenario, we're talking death within three minutes. Uh, you go, you just attacks your heart and uh, you have a heart attack so that's why you'll see all these beaches and no one's swimming. Unless they've got these nets, but they can't have the nets at all the beaches of course because they, they cost quite a lot to maintain. They've got to have lifeguards near the nets and everything as well. So you'll see a few of the beaches have got them, but not where we're going in the middle of nowhere up there. So yeah, you can look at the beach, but you don't want to go for a swim there. Um, really nice boat opportunity there though, because you get the rainforest that runs into the water up there, so that's always pretty spectacular to have a look at. So hang out at the beach for a bit. Ellis Beach up there, you can see another down up there, you can sort of see where we're going, guys, right up the end, there's some the distance there, little mountains off there, that's where we're off to, but it'll become a bit clearer as we get closer, of course. So, uh, yeah, start heading back this afternoon, we should get back tonight, guys, into Cairns, around 6 o'clock, um, obviously the day will be a bit earlier than that, so that's the plan for the day, so there's a bit of driving involved, but these are the views you've got all day now, so yeah, you're not going to get bored looking out the window. So as I said, about half an hour, guys, now. We'll be up to uh, Mossman, that'll be our first break. Looks like we've just arrived in Port Douglas. As you can see, I've got a great view. <laughs> Douglas, I think we just drove straight through it. We're on our way to Moss, but... See Sugar Cane, you know, Rockhampton, Mackay, Bundaberg, it's all over the place, but yeah, there's a little bit around here. They're not harvesting at the moment, we're right at the end of the wet season, so they're just trying to wait for it to dry out. Usually about May they'll start to harvest it, and all it is, it's just grass. So when they do harvest it, it's pretty much like mowing the lawn on a giant scale. 
they? The harvesters are just giant lawnmowers and they just go along. They're not after that green leafy stuff, they're only after the cane in the middle. And they'll chop the cane up into small pieces and uh, they'll put it on trains. You can see this train line just on the left hand side here, it's a little narrow gauge rail. That's all privately owned by the shipping industry, so there's thousands of kilometres that all through Queensland. And uh, they're just getting out and doing some maintenance on it now. You can see the boys up here just doing something to it, uh, getting it ready for the next season. But the trains, they're like little toy trains, you know, that, when you see them. And uh, they just load the train up. They'll take it from uh, farm to farm and then towards the nearest mill, which in this case for us is up here at Mossman. And uh, they just crush it when they get it to the mill. They get the juice out of it and they boil it. When they boil the juice, it crystallises into raw sugar. So it's pretty easy to get to that raw sugar stage. It's about as far as they go up here and then they'll uh, put it on a truck, send it down to Cairns, throw it on a boat. They usually export it as raw sugar to Asia. That's their biggest market. So it's a big, big industry in Queensland sugar cane. But yeah, a little bit of maintenance going on now. But yeah, if you come back between sort of July and October, there is harvesters and trains going everywhere. Uh, they used to burn the cane years ago, but they don't have to burn it anymore. They've got the technology now to, to harvest it green, but back in the day they used to have to cut it by hand. So they'd burn it the night before. The guys would get out the next morning with their machetes. The fires would go through so fast, they'd just get rid of all that leafy green stuff and leave the burnt cane. The guys would get in there with their machetes and cut it down. So, But those days are gone. They haven't seen a cane fire probably up here for like 20 years now. So, but they're pretty spectacular. You can see them from miles away. So, could have been another five minutes, guys, before we in Mossman have a break. We just arrived in Mossman, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty little town. And there's sugar cane. So nice little town. It's all about sugar, but the sugar hasn't started yet. Sugar's cane season anyway. Sugar crushing season, I should say. But in the rainforest now too, you can see all the mountains around us, big mountains. And uh, very excited in Mossman at the moment. They've got a brand new supermarket here on the left hand side. Biggest building in Mossman's history. <laughs> but the thing they're not excited about is they, uh, as a part of the deal, they have to put traffic lights in because they, they're worried about the traffic going into the supermarket. So the Mossman's got a population of about like five people. <laughs> and now they've got all the locals around. They had a big protest here last week, but it didn't help. So now they're gonna have traffic lights in the middle of Mossman, so uh, farmers are not happy. But uh, yeah, very much sugar cane town, guys. When the mill's are pumping away, the whole town smells like sugar. It's like walking through a wall of sugar all day. So you gotta get used to that if you wanna live around a sugar town, that's for sure. But yeah, that's time it's quite nice. We're in the open air on the bus. So just gonna have a bit of a break here, sugar. guys. Uh, little cafe here. They do all sorts of breakfast stuff for you. If you want something to eat, they do bacon and uh, egg muffins and raisin toast. They've got an espresso machine too, if you want a coffee. And uh, nice. toilets, always popular. Oh look, and there's a the So it'll be for about link. 10 minutes, guys. 10, 15 minutes, don't go wandering off too far, we don't want you getting lost. Might end up being a sugarcane farmer for the rest of your life. Wow, well, she's sleepy this morning. Too many people around. So when we get up to the river, it will be about another 40 minutes time, guys. We, we've got tea and coffee up there provided for you, but uh, the coffee up there is instant coffee. So if you're not a fan, if you want a real one, there's the guys to see in here. So in the orange doors, yeah. just in front of us there, and then uh, to the right at the back is where you'll see the toilets. 